Hello everyone, so today I am going to start a new series on Azure. Um, this is a specific uh, topic to Azure. I'm not going to really cover any facets of Sitecore in these. So I've typically been always doing Sitecore videos. Uh, this is a branch off into Azure. I'm also going to do Azure DevOps uh, training as well here in the next few weeks. Um, so today's session is just on what is an Azure resource group. It's the most bare basics uh, of what you're going to be doing when you're doing stuff with Azure. Uh, you're always going to have resource groups. So what are they? They're pretty much just a container or a grouping of resources that you're going to have inside your Azure environment. Uh, right now we're on my Azure uh, portal home page, and I'm going to show kind of walk through the creation of an Azure resource group. Um, but typically another way that you could create an Azure resource group would be using an ARM template. I'm also going to show that here in a next few weeks or so. Some other things to, to know about what a re, what really is special about resource groups is typically a resource group would have a location on it. Um, so if you wanted to have um, some web apps in the west region as well as the east region, you typically would have those in different resource groups. Um, another really important piece about resource groups that you'd want to uh, keep in mind is if you have a resource group that's associated, let's say you were building a web application um, you would typically have SQL databases that apply that, especially if it's a .NET application. Um, the, you would probably want to create a different resource group for your SQL databases just because you're going to have different policies and permissions that would apply specifically to your SQL databases versus the web app application because you want to secure data harder than you do necessarily your web application because there's not much um, protected or sensitive data on your web application. It's just accessing your, your SQL application or SQL uh, databases. So uh, that's pretty much a pretty quick, simple introduction into what a resource group is from my uh, description standpoint. Um, very simple concept. It's just a grouping and that's or a container that takes other resources. So what I want to do today is just show how you would create a resource group. Uh, so to do that, once you're inside your portal.azure.com environment, um, if you don't have one already, you'll, you'll need to create one, uh, create an Azure account. And then once you have one, uh, you should be able to come in here. You're going to have to have a subscription as well. And, uh, and then you can start doing things. Um, so what I'm going to do is you can just see over here on the left-hand side, there's resource groups and there's all resources. So to create a new uh, a resource group, all you have to do is click on resource groups. And I'll bring you to a page where you have a listing of all the resource groups you currently have. Um, I don't have very many in this uh, in my current Azure environment, uh, just because I only use this for testing scenarios out. I don't really have any um, websites that I host or anything like that because it can be quite expensive. But if you're setting this up, either to test out your um, test out these scenarios, or you're you're actually creating a resource group because you're planning on launching a site soon, either for yourself or for a client this is where you'd start. So um, to, to create a new resource group, all you have to do is go up to here and click add. And you're basically gonna have a couple of options. The first one is the name, I'll come back to that in a second. Subscription, that's what I was describing before. Once you create a, uh, your own Azure, or Azure account, you're gonna have to have a subscription associated with it. That's basically just the way it's gonna be charged to you. Um, you could have multiple resource group, or, uh, you get multiple subscriptions if you want to have different, um, maybe different entities inside a business that pay for uh, different um, resources that it would have. Um, but for most people that are just setting up a basic instance uh, or just playing around with this, you're just going to have one subscription. Um, and then lastly was the resource group location. This is what I was describing before. I think it defaults to where you're located currently because I'm currently in Portland, Oregon. So it defaults to the closest one to your your geo location. Um, I used to be on the East Coast, so it used to default to the East Coast as well. So I, I think, it, like I said, it just defaults to the one that's closest to you. Now, you need to think about if you're building this for a client or for yourself, you need to think about where are your customers. Um, if your customers are mostly West Coast customers, then you're probably going to want a West Coast location. If it's East Coast, then you're probably going to want East Coast. If you have multiple, if your your customers are potentially all over the globe, you might have multiple resource groups. But um, I'm just going to select the default of West US. 
And now I'm just going to give it a name. Now, some things in Azure have a global um, distinct name. So you have to give it a distinct name that anybody that's using Azure has not used previously. So something like dev would be, if it's a global restriction, would not probably be available at this point. Resource groups are not like that. So you can come up with ones that are very descriptive of what the, the use case of this uh, resource group is. So if you had a site, maybe it's called blog.com, uh, dots are probably um, invalid, but blog.com uh, SQL or something like that is a way you can name your uh, naming conventions. Um, I'm going to include a link to some guidelines on naming conventions for different um, resources or resource groups uh, inside Azure. So some ideas or guidelines that you should keep in mind when naming these things. And that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do is now you just cl click create and it's going to say it's basically uh, spinning up your resource group, which is just an entity. It says, hey, this is a container, like I said, and uh, relatively quickly it should already be created because it doesn't take that much time to create a resource group so this is a representation of my resource group as you can see there's no resources in it yet now in my next videos i'll start talking about different types of resources that you'd want to create that would go in your resource groups um, which you could either create manually or like i said you could create arm templates to actually deploy out to these these resource groups and as you can see there's a lot of things you can put in as a resource into your resource groups. Um, like I was saying previously, there's a lot of properties and policies and things like that, and you can actually restrict specific access just to this resource group. So you could say only you know, your DBAs would have access to your SQL databases versus um, having where you might have a website and your, your web apps might have a lot more access to them. You might have uh, your client, your um, whoever your vendor is that's building out this implementation. Um, those are typically um, the types of uh, access you'd provide to that specific um, resource group. Anyways, uh, so today uh, that's it. If you have any questions on this, please feel free to reach out to me. Like I said, lots more Azure topics coming up and uh, hope you enjoy.